Welcome to a spiritual journey, part three, the shining path. The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. We're all on a spiritual journey. At certain times in our life, we're more aware of this than others. T.S. Eliot called these intersection points between the timeless and time. It must have been time for me to find this piece of driftwood washed up on the shore. The second part of my spiritual journey ended with the painting The Mountain and the Wall. Shortly after I painted it, I found this piece of driftwood washed up on the shore that looked a lot like the mountain. I imagine what the cross might look like if it still stood today, weathered and eroded down to its base, but the blood still flows. I call this the foot of the cross. Spiritually speaking, when I humbly knelt at the foot of the cross, that was the most important point in my spiritual journey. It was one of those timeless moments at the Lost Marsh in Hammond, Indiana. I noticed a glow above Chicago to the left, and a glow over the factories to the right. But looking north, there's nothing but 400 miles of Lake Michigan, so the sky was completely black. To me, the sky appeared to dip down over the city of Whiting. A church spire stood out on the horizon. I call this Whiting Between. Between the city and the factories, between the lakes, between the earth and the sky, between time and eternity. T.S. Eliot wrote, To apprehend the point of intersection of the timeless with time is an occupation for the saint, and no occupation either, but something given. And taken in a lifetime's death, in love, adore, selflessness, and self-surrender. Here I tried to express how I felt. Psalm 8, verse 3 and 4 says, When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visiteth him? This is called the visit. This is called the prodigal son's father finishing his prayer. His father saw his son a long way off. I imagined him waiting on the front porch and praying. Although he had been crying, he has confidence that his prayer had been answered. Before he even sees his son, a smile starts to come across his face. As the prayer goes out, the wind of the Spirit draws the sun home. The red shrubs are called burning bushes, symbolic of how God got Moses' attention. God got the prodigal son's attention, too. There was a famine in the land, and no man gave unto him. He ran out of money. He got so hungry, the pig slop looked good to him. But when he went back home, his father ran to him, embraced him, and welcomed him back. This is an example of God's great love for us. While we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. This painting recalls September 11, 2001, before the towers fell. The fireman rushes up the stairway to rescue people as everyone else rushes down. This is called In His Steps because the fireman is following the steps of Christ. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. The first real day, 
In the empty high rise, night watchman walks the floors. Looking for intruders, checking for unlocked doors. He circles each dark floor. They all appear the same. Nothing ever changes. It all becomes a game. He makes it to the top, then goes back to the ground. Never an open door. Never is there a sound. Endlessly he sleepwalks, eyes open in a daze. The reason for it all is lost in morning's haze. Why doesn't he give up, lie down and go to sleep? He doesn't fear his boss. The answer's far too deep. Secretly he's longing to find an open door. Then there'd be a reason for walking floor to floor. A stone slate before me, engraved by God's own hand. Letters, symbols, numbers, I could not understand. I did not want to know. I threw it to the ground. The pieces spoke to me. There's meaning to be found. I tried to arrange them, or else I'd be to blame. At last I could read it. A gravestone with my name. The sun came up abruptly on the first real day. All facades then crumbled. All masks were thrown away. I couldn't blame my barber. It was I who didn't shave. I couldn't blame my God for the sins that dug my grave. My money couldn't save me. I could no longer fly. Crushed beneath the rubble, I'd built upon a lie. I ate in the finest restaurants, meaning that in La Francoise dumpster I forged with a rat. I wore the finest clothes to cover that death smell. Decay seeped through the threads, the suit I'll wear to hell. I have the finest home. My parents raised me here. The world is cabled in. To touch a door brings fear. No need to leave for church. Mirrors grace every room. Rocking in the cradle till it becomes a tomb. Shut your mouth, get in line, wait your turn, single file. Marching to the judgment, I've come to my last mile. They strap me to the chair, electrodes all in place. Someone came in shouting, wait, stop, he's found grace. Blood marks road and rails where he gave his life for me. Pulled me out in time, was swept to eternity. Waiting at this crossing, where timeless meets with time, judgment meets with mercy, and punishment meets crime. Someone must pay dearly for justice to be done. Where equity meets perfect love, the victim gave his son. From the highest mountain, across the galaxy, lips that spoke creation are calling out to me, surrounded by wonder, shock, and jubilation. But what is required? There is hesitation. Leave yourself here to die. Walk with me every day. I looked at my carcass. Was there no other way? The most decisive thing I can do is stand still. Against the strong sea wind, it takes up all the will. The egg, left unguarded, is eaten by the snake. The void, left for the real, will be filled by the fake. The times I glimpse the lie, the child molester's grin. Lurking in the mirror, the swastika within. The invisible chains appear before my eyes, laugh at all my wisdom and muffle all my cries. The demons dug in deep, they knew they'd have to go if he came through the door of my cell on death row. Dawn was in the distance, but night grew darker still. There would be no freedom against my stubborn will. I looked again to him, Lord, help me to believe. 
nail-scarred hands held the gift I had but to receive. For thieves, whores, moralists, he left his home above, ungrateful parasites of unwarranted love. Hands that formed us from dust, hands we nailed to a tree, now reach to me in love, the hands that hold my key. Yes, I'm yours, take me now, forgive me of it all, whatever comes or goes, tear down this prison wall. My prayer broke through the sky. The flood came down on me. At last I understood, a servant truly free. Old things are passed away, all things are become new. The hunger satisfied, the searching finally through. He took away my harness, I'd pulled through muck and mire, laboring for the wind, rewarded by the fire. He took my righteousness, now filthy rags all torn, and he clothed me in a robe the king himself had worn. He took away my sins and nailed them to his tree. He took away death's sting and gave eternity. Though trapped in death's dark maze, the coffin lid latched tight, helpless but yet hopeful, there's no such thing as night. He said he'd come for me. I'll hear the trumpet sound. Steel inside won't hold me. I'll burst up from the ground. Though dark clouds may deceive, and shadows block the way. The sun will never set upon the first real day. That concludes this part of my spiritual journey. May that love that lights the universe shine down on you today. You know, Jesus said the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if then I be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. What we look at is very important. I like to look at some of my paintings as I start each day. If you've been inspired by any of them, I'd like to share them with you. After the next part of my spiritual journey, you'll have a more complete overview of my artwork, and I'll give you more information then. I had to split this last section up. Part 4 will be called The End Slash Beginning.